Uh, so I'm here to be uh, to chair this committee. And what we'd like to do is a, a couple language reviews. Let's get those done first. Out of the spirit of, so you guys don't have to sit around forever. So the the first one we're reviewing is uh, LB160, um, which was represented to Shane's mining bill. Um, this is a minority report. I don't know if. Representative Harlan wants to speak to it or I can run through it. You want to? It's up to you. Totally up to you. You don't have to. So, uh, <clears throat> this report changes the title of the bill to an act to prohibit metallic mineral mining in Maine. Uh, and uh, um, after uh, repealing the Metallic Mineral Mining Act, Title 38, Chapter 3, Subchapter 1, Article 9 A, and changing a number of cross references. It enacts Article 9-A, which is Prohibition of Metallic Mineral Mining, uh, which uh, states that notwithstanding any other provision of law to the contrary, an agency of the state may not issue a permit, lease, or license for, or otherwise approve or authorize the mining of metallic minerals in the state for commercial or industrial purposes. Um, this, in effect, prohibits metallic mineral mining in the state. Uh, and this was majority ought not to pass. Questions? Comments? Okay. Go ahead, Representative Duchesne. I'm just thinking here of the irony that if this has a debate on the floor of the House, I'm going to have to speak against my own bill. <laughs> <laughs> it's happened before. <laughs> Sometimes people get surprised at what their bills do. I would simply comment that this is Augusta. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> I was warned not to put the bill in. Now I'm going to suffer for the consequences. All right, it's happened before. You're welcome. All right. All right, move on to the next one. The next sheet that's coming around is salmon colored. Uh, it's LD 400. Uh, this dealt with decks in the shoreland zone. This is the minority report amendment. Majority ought not to pass. Uh, the intent of the amendment is to allow for the construction of <clears throat> a deck uh, within the setbacks um, under the shoreland zoning act, uh, the, the shoreland zoning laws, uh, with a require with a number of requirements for the deck itself and a stipulation that uh, you can't put a deck uh, on your property if you're already using a dock uh, on the same property if it's over a water body or wetland. Uh, so the deck requirements are they have to be for residential use not exceeding 144 square feet in area 12 by 12 not constructed or placed on any area of land with a grade exceeding three percent uh, constructed or placed on permeable material, including but not limited to riprap, gravel, or mulch, um, and that no portion of the deck can extend over into a water body or wetland. Uh, this is an exemption uh, in statute, um, so this would uh, effectively um, preempt any local ordinances to the contrary. Uh, the second section of this bill <coughs> basically provides that anyone who has a temporary uh, dock that they pull up on shore within the shoreland zone to store their uh, over the winter uh, is not subject to penalties for violations of shoreland uh, zoning laws relating to that temporary storage. It's a minority report. We'd be glad to take uh, reconsideration to add a few of you onto the list if you'd like. Okay. Well, would you take comment now? Oh, right, go ahead. It's, you know, I, uh, as we discussed this bill last time, and thank you, Senator, um, I suggested that maybe we will want to take a look at how shoreland zoning has evolved over the years. We haven't really looked at it from an overview in a while. In response to that, the department gave me this, uh, which is a fascinating report. Thank you, Mick. Um, essentially, Vermont did shoreland zoning before Maine did in 1970. Maine essentially cribbed what they did and adopted the same thing. Uh, <clears throat> Vermont had a sunset, so their shoreland zoning law, the statewide law, went away about five years later. Uh, in 2013, they actually studied Maine and compared it to Vermont and found out that because we had their, we had been using their model all along, our lakes were a whole lot better off than theirs were. So we apparently have not been screwing up shoreland zoning as much as the people who invented it. And uh, therefore, I'm quite happy with being in the majority report of this one. Well, I could try at least. <laughs> Any other comment? Thank you. All right, yellow sheet. Uh, so the yellow sheet is the <clears throat> the uh, majority report to LD820, which is Senator Carson's mining bill. Uh, you've seen a number of drafts of this before. This is 
the last draft you looked at with a couple of changes based on the internal OPLA review. Um, <clears throat> there's a couple tweaks in various sections of the bill, but I'll just highlight uh, a couple Shh, areas. Uh, on page three, um, the rulemaking authority for the Maine Land Use Planning Commission under the Mining Act was previously only located in unallocated language in the uh, 2012 law. So we pulled that authority into statute and then there's a corresponding rulemaking directive uh, on the bottom of page 7 to the top of page 8 that has the Land Use Planning Commission adopting <coughs> rules relating to their certification of mining permit applications. Um, I spoke with Nick Livesey, who's the LUPC director. Um, he suggested that because it's unclear how long DEP will take to adopt these changes to the rules if this is enacted, uh, and because they don't really want to start their rulemaking until they see what the rules look like, uh, he had asked this to be pushed back from what was originally a, a February 1st, 2018 deadline to a July 1st, 2018 deadline to make sure they have enough time. I've included that there, um, but we can discuss that. And those more. are routine technical too, right? Uh, under the uh, original law, they were major substantive. They were supposed to uh, go hand in hand with the DEP's major substantive rule changes, but. Um, the discussion that was had uh, this year and two years ago was it makes sense for them to be routine technical rule so changes. Are they, do they have to come back to the legislature? No, we in okay. statute we've made them okay. routine technical. Senator. All right, thanks. But you have me confused here because I thought that the whole point of this is that they're becoming major substantive and so starting off on, uh, on your page three that they are then is all, are all the rules Routine technical? No, just rules adopted by the Maine Land Use Planning Commission, which their authority under the Mining Act is really just to certify to DEP that an area in the unorganized territory or deorganized territory where a mine is proposed is zoned for mining. No, I think you actually answered the opposite. Everything in this related to DEP and any rulemaking is major substantive has to come back to us. It's only Sorry, this I misspoke then, yes. Yeah. Only the part about them zoning it is the only part that doesn't have right to come so this uh, on page so, three this sorry the, the on page okay. three this uh, subsection to main land use planning commission describes the role of the land use planning commission and then says the commission shall adopt rules and that rules adopted under this subsection only are routine technical so there's another provision which is on the, the prior page um, page two which is relating to all the DEP rulemaking and those are all major substantive this is only dealing with the unorganized territory, and it deals with the change that we gave to the Land Use Regulation Commission as more of a planning commission rather than a licensing commission. So one, I'm sorry, just to clarify for my own brain, that, so that the larger pie, we've taken out a particular, a little slice of the pie, which has to do with the zoning, uh, the zoning for the main land use. And th that small slice of the pie is going to be routine technical, whereas everything else is Absolutely. major substantive. And, and then, I'm, then I, I got distracted. That so then the rest of this follows through with that pattern. What you were just talking about, right? So the the, the corresponding unallocated directive to ensure that those rules are adopted in a timely fashion, that's in section ten of the bill, which just says adopt those rules by July first, twenty eighteen. I get it. Okay. Thank you very much. Keep uh, so uh, on page four, it's another starred and marked area. Uh, this is the narrow definition of mining area um, just for the purposes of the paragraph that relates to contamination of groundwater. Um, it's mostly s the same as the, um, the language that was reviewed the last time, just things have been shifted around a little bit and a couple words tweaked to make clear what the intent of the definition is. But I'll just read it here. For the purposes of this paragraph, mining area means an area of land approved by the department and set forth in the mining permit not to exceed 100 feet in any direction from a mine shaft, surface pit, or surface ex excavation. So the intent of this provision is that the DEP would be looking at what the definition of mining area is in each permit and determining uh, what a, 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 a an appropriate mining area would be for a shaft or for uh, any surface pit or surface excavation. Uh, it could not exceed 100 feet in any direction from any of those uh, areas, um, but it, it could be smaller than that if the department determines that that's uh, reasonable. Um, OK, 
Okay, keep going. Uh, so on page five, going on to halfway on to page six, uh, this is the financial assurance language section. Um, when going through the review, it became uh, clear that uh, with the multiple revisions that had been done on this from the original bill, pulling in uh, language from the, the provisionally adopted rule sections on financial assurance, um, <clears throat> and also incorporating the worst case scenario language, uh, there was some redundancy and lack of clarity between how the different provisions of this section work together. Um, so we've reworked uh, this financial assurance language. Um, this has been shared with NRCM and DEP, uh, and they both uh, are comfortable that this meets the intent uh, of the section and of the of the the members of the committee that voted for this. Uh, although it has been uh, reworked a bit, uh, just to clarify what each provision relates to. So in this uh, subsection, uh, paragraph A describes what the uh, amount of the financial assurance must cover. Paragraph B describes the third party review. Paragraph C describes uh, how the department um, requires the financial assurance amounts. Uh, paragraph D states what the financial insurance must be provided in. Uh, and paragraph E just notes that uh, the financial assurance required has to be posted before the department issues a permit. Um, so the intent in this entire section was just to clarify how everything worked together. Um, and again, there, there are no, uh, I believe I can say there are no substantive changes to what was voted on previously. Does that conclude the changes? Uh, other than <coughs> very uh, minor language tweaks here or there, um, which I have not highlighted, uh, those are the changes that I did want to highlight. So your, your job really was simply to integrate what the interested parties had already decided on? Uh, the, the, the review that went on in my office was a, a legal and a technical review, looking at both uh, any uh, legal issues with this as well as uh, making sure it was drafted correctly. So all the changes in here came out of a result of that. And this draft was shared um, with both NRCM and the DEP uh, to ensure that it, it met uh, their requirements and their understanding of what was voted on by majority of the committee. Okay. Any further questions? Shall we move on to the next bill? So uh, just very briefly, this will now get sent off to the revisor's office and the fiscal office to undergo additional technical uh, editing and other legal reviews, as well as a fiscal analysis. Um, we're going to try to expedite that uh, at the request of the chairs. Uh, and um, I'd appreciate, since there are some changes in here, um, if any of you notice any issues with it or, or any interested parties in the audience notice any issues, um, please let me know. We'll probably have uh, at least a couple days, probably a week before this leaves the committee. Okay. The hope is to get it up on the floor as soon as we possibly can. Questions, comments? Good work. What else we got? Uh, blue sheet, which I think you have now. Uh, LD 901. 